Hi everyone, welcome to my tutorial on cleaning and lubricating Sony Macintosh 800K and 1.4 megabyte drives. These little guys right here. Most of you are probably familiar with them if you're watching this video or would like to repair some. Before actually getting into the cleaning and repairing, lubricating of the drives, uh, I'd like to show you some differences between them, how you can tell them apart. The 800K drives are basically the same as the 1.4 megabyte drives. You can see I have two of them right here. Okay. Uh, there are a few small differences that you will notice that will actually help you identify them. One is there is an identification tag and sticker that is on the side, as you can see here and here. Okay, the 800K drives are red stickers, the 1.4 megabyte drives are blue, okay, and the 800K designation is MFD51W, which stands for Micro Floppy Disk Drive 51W, and the 1.4 megabyte drives are MFD75Ws. There are always some other small revision numbers after this one happens to be 01G, I've got another one here that happens to be 31G, and to be honest with you, I wouldn't have a clue as to what it is that the difference is between those, just that there's um, probably very small minor uh, modifications made between them. The other place you can find that information is underneath here on the disk rotation platters. You can see here it has what type of drive it is and 2 megabyte, 2 MB, which is the same thing as the 1.4 megabyte drive it simply lists the unformatted capacity of one of the disks. There are just a few other things that uh, you can see differently here that were actually revised throughout production. Some of those have to do with the auto inject closing mechanism. If you look here with the 800K here on your left, okay, you'll notice the closing mechanism has this very small catch right here which the disc hooks onto inside and will close very easily like that. You see how that just went and ejected very easily. Okay. Now the later model 1.4 megabyte drives have a similar catch mechanism but they can't simply be triggered just by pushing them in. They have a bit of a fail safe which is actually this little kick out here. That has to be kicked out by the side of the disc first before that will actually catch. I believe that was done to prevent accidental early closures, which was probably an issue on some of the earlier drives, or at least they thought was going to be an issue. I've never seen it happen personally. There are some other small things, one of them being that the floppy eject motors, which you can see here on earlier revision drives, actually were connected the motor to the board here by wires. You can see them running a little bit right in there. There's little wires that run between. And on the 1.4 megabyte drive motors, you can see there are actually soldered leads between the boards. And this is important to some degree uh, when actually cleaning and lubricating these eject motors because these types are a little bit harder to take apart although not impossible and I'll go into that towards the end of the segment here. The last thing that I've noticed that is different between the two is the floppy head motor you can see mounted here okay has a worm drive which is right there you can see it and as you can see pretty much the actual worm drive itself comes directly out through this plate from the motor on the 800k drive. On the 1.4 megabyte drives there's this extra post right here where my finger is and inside there's kind of a bit of a recessed well of sorts in there that the worm actually comes out of. Again I haven't the faintest idea what difference any of these things make, although obviously they found it necessary in order to um, continually update and improve the drives. 
All right, so all the instructions I'll give you are very good for actually working on and cleaning and relubricating any of these drives. Okay, if you have any questions, just let me know. Drop me a line here on YouTube and I'll get back to you and answer you as best I can. Here you can see all the products that you'll need to actually undertake the cleaning. All right, very basic, simple tools and just a bunch of cleaning supplies and lubricants that will be of great use to you. So starting in the back at the left, I have a convenient squirt bottle of 91% isopropyl alcohol. You really want to use this and not the 70% stuff just because the 70% has too high of a water content which can cause issues with uh, rusting and also electronic problems uh, if left on the board. I've also got a very fine thin triple elite lubricant uh, oil product there. It's not needed through most of the actual project although it will be used on some uh, bearings as we will see throughout the project. If you don't have anything like this regular general 3-in-1 household oil can also be used. In the middle, the small little white container is Mollycoat EM30L Grease. This is a more advanced version of the EM10L Grease that was used to lubricate the original drives back in the 80s and early 90s. This was actually recommended by uh, DuPont who currently manufactures it as a replacement for the original EM10L. I also have here a large and very small needle nose plier. One will be used to unhook springs and the other will be used to help remove uh, little washers, little nylon washers that hold down part of the actual chassis. We'll get to that later. A P0 Phillips screwdriver in order to help remove certain screws that will be used on the head and on the eject assembly. And of course a generous supply of cotton swabs which you will need to help remove all the dust, dirt, grit and grime of years and it's also usually a good idea to have some paper towels along with you as well as those sometimes will be helpful to get a little lot large wide swaths of areas clean okay so in general here the first thing that we want to do is take a look over at the drive see what position it's in if it's jammed if it's not okay usually even with all the old grease still in place usually the drives can be actuated um, simply by hitting the lever here and okay, hitting this on the older drives making the drive go down into the lower position there you can see how slow that is and how long that takes and the way that you would return the drive to the upward position is by pushing the lever right here in forcefully and popping that back up okay you will notice that again when I hit this it goes down very slowly okay and now it's amazing just how much better that'll be once we're all done so in general the first thing that I do before actually dowsing this with any alcohol is looking to see if there are any printings or markings that you want to save now me being the preservationist as I am I like to make sure that I don't inadvertently remove anything that would have ought rather would have been on here um, you can kind of see some here there's some little letters right here. It looks like a 1, 2. Some of the drives, as I'll show you on one of my 1.4 megabyte drives, have much more prominent printings, as you can see right there. And the thing is, most of the inks and dyes that were used to put those on were alcohol-soluble, as are the ones up here on top of the read-write head. Now, you can ask me how I know that, and I will tell you because I've inadvertently erased them before. So it was a learning process for me as well. So I'll usually take a dry cotton swab and just start hitting all the dust and dirt here. As you can see, this is a really generous amount of dirt that was on here. This came from a Macintosh SE with a fan. And that notoriously was a big, big cause of what they called vacuum bag syndrome that basically created a wind tunnel and sucked all the dust in through the front of the computer and through the floppy drive. So you can see right here a rather generous amount of dust that's picked up even without using any alcohol or any cleaning agent. So I just like to go through and get as much of this free dust as I possibly can before actually using any cleaning agent. And the usual places are right up here on top, up here in the corners, up here in the back 
on the chassis you can get all that gunk and dust out of here some here as well as you can see and also look inside the drive you know and we'll, we'll, we'll get down there much more once we start disassembly but basically just giving it a kind of once over type cleaning all right just get all the huge globs of dust this way we don't have to deal with that later on as you can see here okay some places that were lubricated right here these two points here and here that these move and slide over when the drive is closed as well as this pin right here okay and those are some places that we'll be getting to very soon so the first thing I'll do I get rid of this dirty swab is to show you first thing first what we're gonna do is we're gonna put the drive in the down position okay gonna hit that there and we want to do that so that the floppy drive read write head is closed the reason we want to do that is that when it's in the raised position there's pressure holding it up from this plastic plate we want to remove this plastic plate. There's a little tab right here, this little thing right there, that you actually want to pick up just with your fingernail, raise that up, and then slide the plastic off towards the rear of the drive and just remove it. Okay, it's that easy. Just take that and put that to the side, and then hit the manual release lever again to raise the drive back up, but notice this time the read write head did not come up with the rest of the drive. Once that is done, the next thing we're going to do is take our uh, springs up. Actually, you know what? I misspoke. I apologize. Let me put that back down again. You don't want to lift it up yet. You want to leave it in the down position. With these really small tweezers, we want to get these two springs, one on either side. You can see there's one right here. and I've by accident before uh, actually bent these little hooks. You can see them here. There's little hooks which go right underneath this tab. And this is made out of very fine wire, this spring is. So what you want to do is instead of grabbing from the bottom and pulling down, that can actually distort the spring itself. You want to grab right here closer to where the actual hook meets the spring and then pull out and down as this puts the least stress on it as possible. Out and down like that. As you see, that keeps our nice hook there. Okay. Turn that here. And then we'll do the same thing on this side as well. There we go. Okay. Now, of course, be careful because if you really pull these or distort them, they'll never get back into the right shape again. And you also run the risk of possibly fleeing them across the room. I've never done that, but I've heard other people have. So, all right. So now that we have those off, okay, you can see here now with the springs off, this is very free and movable. What you want to do is when we take this off we have to make sure that we clear this little tab here okay that's very important so we can lift up and off like this and it literally just comes right off it's held on literally by nothing else other than the springs itself okay now you can see more of the underneath of the drive okay and we'll get to that part later but for right now, we're going to concentrate on this upper plate here. So taking a look here at the upper plate, notice a few things first. The mechanism here is rather simple. There's two different things that occur. One is this here, which actuates when the disk actually is placed, uh, the disk drive rather, is placed in the upright position. This mechanism here, okay, stretches this spring and moves over these two slide points there. So it looks like it moves pretty well, but it's not quite as good as it can be. I can feel quite a bit of resistance. You would too if you were here. The other is here. This is the eject trigger, if you remember from before. And under most circumstances, this does not need to be lubricated. 
Um, every once in a while I'll find on the originals there was some form of very thin little grease under here and I'll sometimes replicate that with just a tiny bit of the EM30L. The other thing is this right here is a movable piece this goes right around this spindle and this is movable but fairly well seized and these three rollers here which roll on tracks on the main part of the frame so this one here is totally jammed up this one if you can see it here it actually spins freely this one over here I just broke it to make it move and this one here too is yes completely jammed now those are what I recommend using that very thin oil on to help actually get back in moving shape again and underneath there's usually there's really nothing going on under there you just may need to clean it out now this drive shows a little bit of a corrosion I think it was probably stored in a bit of a damp area for some time so what I'll do first is we'll get our isopropyl alcohol coat the swab not spraying it directly on the surface and again you can see those stampings there just try to avoid the stamping go along the surface clean up everything else that you can obviously on a drive like this we're not going to be getting all this corrosion and kind of a mottled appearance off it but that's not the goal anyway the goal here is just to get the drive back into functional condition this is not going to be a museum piece, it's going to be a functional piece of hardware for another machine. So just go along here, get all this dust and all this nastiness off here as you can see. And clean all this here. And as you go through, you can see the remnants of the grease here. That's what these little traces and tracks are right along these here. Okay, so I'll just go like this and just nice swipe with pressure kind of get in there and remove all that old gunk because it's certainly not doing anyone any good the way it is get that off there there we are and a good thing to do is kind of cycle through push this over and hold it there get the rest of the grease off there we go if you can hear him don't mind my son being a bit of a fuss up there I think he uh, woke up a little bit too early from his nap okay all right so mostly there we just make sure that we get all those little last remnants of grease off of there and as you probably noticed even with the little dust caked up on it it was actually a very sparing amount of grease and that's key as we're going through this whole thing is just how little grease we need to use because honestly if we use too much of it you may actually bind the mechanism I found that numerous times you know I just figured oh well you know I'll just put a whole bunch more put a little extra that should make it work even better and that is certainly not the case whatsoever. I'll just clean all the rest of this stuff off. A little bit here, a little bit there. There we go. All right. Make sure all that gunk is off of there. And you can see now, or at least I can feel, that even without that old grease there, things are moving significantly quicker and easier. Okay. Make sure I get all this here. So now on those rollers here, there's usually a thin, tiny layer of grease left caked on them. It can be a little bit difficult to get off sometimes. You can use the alcohol on the swab here again. And every so often there's also some caked up grease here on the sides that wore off and got pushed on from the rest of the chassis of the drive assembly you can see here too right there there's some grease get that and if you can't one thing I neglected to say earlier is that use of these little flat toothpicks is very helpful to kind of bust and break up that stuff 
if you can't get it off easily. This way it's actually pretty stiff, stiff enough to get the stuff off, but not so stiff like a metal tool that you'll scratch and otherwise mar the surface of the drive. I'll swap to the other side there. There you go. Get some of this off. the idea as we go along here just do this to each one of the rollers make sure we have all the gunk off this one moves again this one is starting to move again it's still slightly frozen okay we're gonna rectify that with that really tiny little bit of oil so now looking over this this is relatively well cleaned the one place I forgot to say to check and swab is inside the tracks here where the actual floppy disk will go. You don't want globs of nastiness getting all over your disks once you insert them in. Just kind of go in those tracks, swab in and out there. Make sure you get that stuff off. Okay, So that's looking pretty good now. Okay, We got most of the dust, we got all the old grease off, everything's looking great. So the next thing we'll do, get those rollers working, get that little tiny fine oil, okay, like I said, any household type oil will work as well. And just put a tiny little drop on the inner track here, and a little bit right there, and then usually I just kind of work that in back and forth with my fingers until we got that roller broke free from whatever crud inside there is getting that going. I don't know if you can appreciably see this, but this thing is now rolling like a champ, like there was nothing wrong with it at all. Okay, and you can either use some paper towel or cotton swab just to get off the rest of the oil. Like I said before, less is more. Okay, we don't want to have too much build up on these things. So here we go again. We'll do this one now. Tiny bit of oil work it in. Get it turning nicely there. Clean it off. And get to the other side. There we go. Now sometimes if these things are really tough and they just they won't move and they won't budge what I would suggest is using our large, flat, non-ribbed needle nose pliers, okay? Reason for non-ribbed is you want a nice flat surface because if you take them and go onto the roller like this, you can work it back and forth until it doesn't seize anymore. But if you have the ones with ribbing on there, you'll probably mar and gouge little bites out of the actual roller itself which isn't going to help you at all. I'll get that there. Clean that off. Get this one going. There it goes. Very nice. Okay, good. Lucky this time that these rollers are actually in pretty good shape. Alright, so we put the oil on the side next thing we're going to get to here is using our grease molly coat grease and again as i said i neglected to tell you that these toothpicks are very helpful the flat broad ones are very good uh if you have just the regular kind like you shove in sandwiches that's fine but you know, whatever works works so this is the stuff that really is a replacement for the original lubricant if you don't have access to this or don't have any you just have some lithium grease lying around that should work too people have been doing that for years but I just want to do it here with what's as close to original as possible for historic reasons and you know, just for lubrication in general just to be able to get this thing nice so what I suggest to do here is you take this you put like tiny little blob right there remember again less is more very sparing 
Okay, we'll do the same thing here. There we go. Take this here, just move that over. And then work this in, push it that way. Okay, and let it actually work onto the track. Okay, and guide its way through. What we'll do then is then holding it in the other direction, holding it over here, place some on the other side so that it works it all the way into the other side of the mechanism. There, like that, okay? So now we have a good amount of grease on both sides. Okay, really, really working nicely there. And if you're a stickler for neatness like I am, I'm going to clean up some of this excess grease this way it won't gunk anything later on, okay? And there you go, okay? So that helps that. Now the other part here, I must say it's very difficult to initially get the grease out of here. You noticed I went over it earlier. So I got it as much as I possibly could, but that's never 100% perfect. But all you really have to do here is kind of pack it in. Here's where it doesn't really matter so much if you use kind of more rather than less. You don't want to use a, a bolt load, but this is basically just to lubricate between the surfaces of the plate that this thing rides next to and the actual bearing itself. All right, so we'll just pack that in there. There we go. Okay. That'll help that ride over. You can see it barely travels. It just kind of comes in contact to it a little bit. You can see it moving there back and forth. And that's fine. Okay, so we just get that in there. Make sure there's a fair amount of grease actually in that groove. That's what we're going for. And then, as I said, you can always just wipe off the excess if you're that sort of neat freak type person. Okay, but anything like that's fine. Last but not least, if you really want, which I will here just for demonstration purposes, take an unbelievably small amount of the grease, wipe it underneath here, especially over here where it rubs over, and just let it kind of work in there. This way you don't have any binding down the road. Okay. Last but not least, this thing is, is rotating. So I'll give it just the tiniest little dab of oil here. There we go. And just let that work in. Okay. That way that thing will be nice and free to spin for a long time to come. Okay, we'll get that there. There we are. Alright. So for the most part, that's it for the upper plate here, okay? Just noticed here I had a little little excess grease underneath there. Just get that out of there. Good. Okay. And that's all you need. As you can see here, there's a very, very tiny amount of grease. If I lay this down flat, you can barely see it. There's two little bumps there, perhaps. I can take off. We don't really need. Okay. But that's all the grease you need. It doesn't have to be any more than that. Just a thin little coating for this to actually ride over. All right. Lastly, there's one little tiny area that's usually overlooked by most people, and that is inside here at the top of the mechanism. There's a little bit, and I've inconsistently found grease in here, right inside this area here. Okay, There really is maybe the tiniest little bit here that I can see. I'll try to illustrate it for you, but I don't think the lighting is great. Just kind of get any of that little crud out from behind there. Throw in a small smattering of grease. Actually, the best way to do it, I think, on here is just put it over this little bearing right there and let it let it kind of take it in. There we go. That's good. So that's the only other place there really where there's contact. Okay, and that'll do it for this plate. So you can go put that aside, and now we will get started on the rest of the mechanism. All right, so here's the rest of the drive. Take a look here. 
just a few main parts to point out. Okay, this is the actual dr drive motor spindle apparatus here that spins the actual disc inside the diskette. Okay, you got the slide here that works for the inject and eject. You can see it's very sluggish because of the lack of appropriate lubrication comp currently. This is the read write head motor. Okay, this is the motor that actually sends the read write head here forward and backward over the surface of the disc. This itself is the read write head. Okay, And this right here is the eject motor. Okay, The eject motor is what actually runs and ejects the disc, doing, making an auto eject from software in the computer. Okay, So what we want to do next is we want to get this lower plate off in order to clean underneath it and to lubricate. But first, the only way to do that is to make sure you remove the eject motor. And that is accomplished by removing these two Phillips head screwdriver, screws rather, right here and right here. Okay, so we'll use our Phillips Zero for that. There we go. Okay, take that. It helps to have a magnetized one. Let's hold on to the screws. You can see that starts coming off there. Here we go. Just can tell a little more. Okay, good. And you'll see that will literally just come up and hinge away. Now you can see why that was necessary. Part of the eject motor right here actually goes right over this area here, which is part of this whole entire sliding plate. So if that's still in place, this can actually come up. So what you can do is you can either just let this hang here like this, or if you just give this connector a little tug, there's no uh, latch or anything. It literally just comes, pulls off. You can take this and put it aside. We'll get to cleaning that later. So now we have this here. So the only thing that's holding this actual slide plate on are these four nylon washers. One, two, three, and four. Okay, And they're actually pretty bendable and contortable since they are nylon. So you can actually rip them if you don't do this correctly, but if you have the nice flat head needle nose pliers like you see here, it is entirely possible to just get them up without doing any harm to the washers themselves. And what that entails doing is taking the pliers here, okay, you get really nice stiff pressure, hold the drive down in place, and literally direct the force of the tip of the needle up like this. Don't pull it, don't do anything else, but go directly up like this. And you just give it constant pressure, constant pressure, and pop, okay? Don't pull it or force it. It should come off just like that. As you can see, it's not bent or contorted at all. And just take that and put it on the side. Repeat the same procedure for the other ones. Okay. Some come off easier than others. Sorry about bumping into the camera there. Sometimes they're a little stickier or a little, a little less sticky simply because of there being some residual dust. Okay. Not didn't clean the plate yet. It's easier to clean it once it's off. So do here as well. Give it time. Be patient. There we go. And it just pops and snaps right off. Okay. So now that those are off, just set them aside there. Now you can just take this and lift the whole thing right off the rest of the drive. Okay. So we'll take the rest of the drive. We'll put that aside. Okay. So what we're going to concentrate on here is cleaning off the remaining grease which on the bottom of the plate usually is just by these four slides here, 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 and here, okay? With some extra grease usually found right here on this side, opposite from where the eject motor plate was, okay? The other place you'll find it on the top is 
over in the back here where the eject motor spindle comes in contact as well as some up here under these two washers now to be honest with you it's been a mystery to me as to why there apparently is lubrication here underneath these two points but not over here you can see on this drive itself you can see the remnants of lubrication there and there but not on these posts and this has been consistent through every single drive that I've ever taken apart I'm not sure why that is perhaps somebody watching this might have a little more information and can write in so the procedure for this is the same thing we've done before okay, we'll just take our isopropyl alcohol on the cotton swab and then just start working off this grease here take all that off same thing over here just kind of go over the whole thing Get all this dust gunk gook corners, everything. Okay. The other places where you find traces of old lubrication are on here. Okay, these little areas here, because these are the tracks where those rollers from the upper plate actually contact. Okay, you can see here there's a little bit of leftover old lubrication there. I'm going to take my trusty toothpick, actually bust that off. There we go. Clean. Same thing over here. All right. So outside those areas and underneath here as well, that's where you actually take off all the grease. So I'll fast forward that and I'll get right back to you guys once it's all done. Okay, so having spared you watch me clean this entire thing, you can now see that it is clean and free of old grease and dust. Okay, now we'll get to the actual lubrication of the contact points here underneath. Now here I'd say not a tiny amount of grease, but not a huge amount. Just want to get like a nice sized blob right on top of the actual contact there. This stuff is somewhat adherent to the stick, but that should be fine. That'll be good. Grab yourself another blob here. Paint it on there. And same thing for these others right here. And there. And this one here as well. And that should do well for us as far as that's concerned. The other places I'd also recommend are back here along where the plate is routinely touched by the eject motor spindle. Okay. Just a tiny bit there where it touches. And um, the other place on this plate is just running a tiniest little bit right along these tracks here. So little you can barely even see it. Just that this way there's a bit of a smooth surface. For the upper plate rollers to roll on. Alright, so believe it or not, that is all that you need to do with this plate. Okay, it's otherwise fairly clean, just a little bit of surface corrosion, rust. I'm not surprised with, I think this thing was in more of a damp environment. And we'll put that over on the side. So the next thing we're going to do is start to focus here on the rest of the mechanism. 
Now, there's two ways you can do this. You can either, oops, can either clean up all this grease here and dust and everything and then concentrate on this area. But I think I'm going to do now is I'm going to remove the head assembly and show you how to clean that and to make sure that the motor is greased and oiled as well. Okay, so there's one thing that's very important here to know and that is that to remove the head assembly, number one, do not ever force the top of the head assembly open any more than you could probably slide the cotton swab through. There is a thin band of metal that runs here which has a certain tension to it and if you were to pull this up any further than that the metal may deform enough so that the heads will no longer contact with enough force and then the disc upper surface won't ever be able to be read and you'll need an entire new head assembly. Okay, So we'll just avoid doing that. The other thing that you want to do and make sure that you, well, that you don't do rather is to adjust the zero track assembly which is this right here. That is held in place by this silver screw that I'm pointing at right this moment. Okay, we want to leave that alone. What we need to do in order to remove the head assembly is to remove these two black screws. There's one located right here and the other is located right here. So I'm just going to go ahead and remove these. So there's a good amount of dust all trapped in there. We'll get rid of that as well. And just put this on the side. Okay, we'll take that one as well. So now when you remove this, you're not just removing the head assembly, you're also removing the metal slide from here back to here, if you can see that, that actually the head assembly moves on when it rotates, or rather goes back and forth along with the gearing here that rotates from the head motor. So what you need to do is there's these two tabs, one here, one there, two data tabs, one for each head. Now, you do have to put them back in the correct position. The good thing is that these things have been in here for so long that usually when you remove this, they have pretty good memory into which area they go. So you really shouldn't have a problem figuring that out. Okay, but in case you need to, just make reference as to which one goes where and where they come from. Okay, usually the frontmost one is for the lower head and the back one is for the upper head. So we'll pull those out. You should be able to remove those with minimum force. Just gentle upward pressure. Do the same here for this one. There we go. All right, so next thing, we're gonna take the head assembly from back here. Okay, don't grab it from up here, up here, because you may bend that metal back. But back here by the metal, and slide it this way and out. Okay, so kind of rotate it like this. Up and out, okay? And it should just pop off just like that in one large piece. So put the rest of this down here. The one thing you're gonna wanna do here is just to remove this bar this one actually slides relatively decently. But as you can see, there's a whole bunch of dust buildup. And we're going to want to take that off and lubricate that sparingly with the oil, fine instrument oil that we have anyway. So we just remove that out. Uh, I've seen in at least one of Larry Pina's books that there may be a cap that fits on one end of these. But so far in all the drives that I've taken apart, I've never seen them. That either means that most of them do not have it, or perhaps they've all been overhauled and somebody lost them. But either way, it doesn't seem to affect the function whatsoever. So I'll put this on the side as well. So as you can see here, all the head assembly consists of are the actual drive heads themselves. Read-write heads, which are right inside here. 
okay there and there you can see those okay and we also have here as we said these two cables as well All right so the last thing is this pin guide here which fits right over the actual um, area for the uh, worm drive for the motor to function so the first thing that I will actually show you specifically how to do is just to clean the drive heads which as I said take the cotton swab open this just enough to get in between the heads and just kind of give it a bit of a back and forth motion okay usually these are not very soiled okay, if you see anything dirty on the q-tip then try doing it again okay but as I said do not open these any further than you can do this and let them close okay now the rest of this I'm just gonna clean up with the swab and then we'll get back to this once you've uh, once I've done that and you can see what the finished product looks like okay so here's the completed head assembly <clears throat> everything's all nice and clean taken care of um, next thing we'll do is actually lubricate the guide pin here momentarily one thing I'd like to do before doing that um, is to show you here with the actual rod that it travels over it's very easy to lubricate this and you only need a sparing amount I'll use that very fine oil that I had earlier the easiest way I find is to just lay some there onto the paper towel take this fold it over it and just kind of run this back and forth like this just so you get the, the surface kind of lubricated up with that and go put that back into its guide here and then usually that thin coating of oil should just make this very very smooth acting and this is extremely easy to get in and out matter of fact it's so slippery as you can see it just keeps going and that's from a very very tiny amount of oil so to actually lubricate this guide pin here do the same thing we've done before with our trusty toothpick and get a, a reasonable sized blob there and no matter what you do as you can probably notice here there's always some at least small degree of grease still caked in here and no matter how much you get out there's always a little tiny bit left but that's not really that important more important to just go ahead kind of pack that in there like that cleaning up some of the extra and then of course as always wiping off extra that makes it to places that it shouldn't be there we go a nice little reservoir of gre grease there so now the head assembly itself is ready to be reinstalled we'll also put that on the side and then we'll move on to the majority of the base unit here itself so just a few things to go over I already told you about all the parts uh, the important thing again is to not touch or adjust the zero track sensor which is right here that or that screw another important point is unless you're making adjustments which I don't recommend if the drive is otherwise working properly do not touch or adjust these hex screws in the back either as that will throw off the adjustment for the tracks as well okay so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna clean this up and then I will get back to you with the finished product there's not too much to note here except that there usually on the grease points there is grease here there's two little raised areas here and here as you can see here and here as well there's some divots kind of roughed in there and the grease here at these points as well you can also still see there usually is also some residue here this one's pretty clean on the outside and here as well as on the inside parts which I'm sure you can probably see to some degree right there take a look and on the reverse side as well 
So those are the main areas that you want to take off the grease. Again, the thing to be cautious of is that if you would like to keep it, do not use alcohol to clean here or here on these serial numbers where you will permanently erase them and take them off of the plate. So in just a moment for you, I'll have this all cleaned up in a GIF. Okay, so here we are again, and the drive is basically clean, as you can see. Now there's one more thing that I didn't do yet that I just wanted to illustrate to you, and that is using a toothpick here to help clean out the teeth of this worm gear here. I also have some other toothpicks which are pointier. As a matter of fact, give me a moment, let me grab one of those. They're just your regular garden variety toothpicks that you would get at the store, okay, that have a sharper point. And what I usually will do is actually take that, put it inside the groove of the gear and just kind of spin the gear like this to help get those nasty deposits of gunked up grease off of there. I can see here there's a few few larger ones. Obviously you don't have to get everything. It's not that big of a deal, but if there's any large nasty looking pockets left, there's one right there. You want to get that just kind of work work this in like that. And the rest of it you can just remove with paper towel or your finger or something like that. Now, the other thing is you can still see that there's a little dust left in here. I tried blowing it out. It was a little bit tenacious, but don't get overzealous. Don't think that you should remove the screw, as I said, to not do and get in there. There's a little bit of dust, whatever. It's not a big deal. It's not going to affect function any, that's for sure. All right, so this is basically finished from that standpoint. Okay, the majority of the grease that you saw on here was grease that came from the plate here that we had already put previously on those mount points except for two areas three actually I suppose uh, let's see here take some grease two of them are these little bumps here in the left rear corner okay we're gonna apply some grease there the small little blobs okay, right on those raised areas okay which is fairly important right there as well as on the fronts of these posts right here a little bit of a blob and a trail and right here as well I'll just get a little bit extra here there we go some there and there and then the last place on here you want to put some. It's just a very, very thin amount on the insides of these here, okay? Very, very small amount. Just like a little film almost. Very sparing again. Tiny, tiny bit is the key. Last thing I like to do here is take a little bit of the grease. And although it's packed on the actual guide bar for the head assembly, I do like to paint some grease in here as well. There we go. Okay, so that's it as far as the grease is concerned. So I kind of go above and below to get it in the grooves. Last but not least, even though this is actually flowing pretty freely. I like to put just a dab of this oil here. Tiny little bit. And a tiny little bit right here. There we go. Just a little tiny bit. That'll help keep things lubricated. Again, a minimal amount is the key. All right. So now we get around to starting to put it back together. Okay, the first thing 
actually is that I didn't show you how to do this before. It's very simple. It's not complicated at all. So how to clean these nylon washers. They obviously usually have like caked on grease and just some nastiness. So I just get the cotton swab and take all the, that stuff off there. Should dry them with the other end. Again, all of these are relatively universal. It doesn't matter which post they come off from. It doesn't matter which one they go on to. Okay, it's not a big deal. You can also just blow on them to dry them off also. It's not a big deal. Let's finish making sure all the old grease and gunk is off. So a little bit more gunked up than the other. Just remove that. Now, except for some incidental grease that gets on these on the right side, uh, these are not lubricated. Okay, they just go on straight dry. There we go. Rest that off. Okay, excellent. All right. So first thing we're going to do is we'll take the sliding lower plate here, reinstall this back. Let's get this in view for you guys. Okay, make sure that it lines up with these four posts right into these four sliding areas. Okay, it should just slide directly on there and drop right on. Now, with the new lubrication, this should slide incredibly easy. Okay, you can see this is far, far easier than it moved before. And you can see just by doing that action there and then lifting up, take it up again, you can see it leaves basically the same grease marks as they were previously except with fresh grease. Okay, That means that we've lubricated it in the areas that it needs to be. So you can see here this moves very freely. You may hear some metal friction but that's normal. That's not a big deal. So once that's back in place, we'll take our nylon washers and you simply just need to take your thumb, usually is the easiest, and push these in until they grab again. You don't even hear a click, but you can just, you can almost feel them just slide right back on the way that they should. Okay, I'll take that here push that down too. It may hurt your thumb a little bit. A little bit tender, but either your thumb, any finger, whatever you can use to get the job done. Just don't let them go flying away. There we go. Okay, good. So those washers are on. And you can see here that this still slides nice and freely. I'll just make sure these are all right where they need to be. Now I will admit this one is a little bit tighter than I would normally expect it to be with those washers on. They just need to be worked in a little bit more back and forth to really smooth things in. Okay, but it still is easily movable from both sides, which is fine. All right, so with that done, what we'll do next is install the head assembly. Okay. So the way to do this again is now we have this nice lubricated bar. You can't really see it, but where the grease is packed, there's a thin little metal tab you can see right there. And on top, there's a little metal guide, if you would have seen it from earlier. You need to slip that with the drive spindle here 
in between those two pieces of metal. Okay, so just slide it right in like that and drop it down and just make sure that the guide bar is firmly pressed up against the front of the drive housing right there okay make sure that's in place get our screws again same Phillips screwdriver get those in you may need to actually adjust and move the head itself along the track a bit in order to be able to line up the screws and the holes because a lot of times these things will actually get in the way and doing the rear one is a bit easier first that secured there okay. let's see if we can get at this one here Slide it forward or back just a tad. There we go. Just to get it a bit out of the way. And there we go. We'll start getting this screw back into place if it decides it wants to go. here maybe they need to move up just a tad bit more there we go just move it on up now the screw should be a little bit more easily accessible there we go it's like with anything sometimes you just have to kind of finagle this stuff a little bit to get it in all right so it's screwed in secured as I said before usually these have a bit of memory as to which slot they'll actually go into you can see here they're flopping one right in front of the other I'll put this one right here and this is for the upper head we will insert that just takes a little bit of pressure there we go and same thing with this one here a little bit of pressure there we go and they're in okay so now the, the head assembly is all set there <clears throat> now if you're going to continue on and not work on these gears okay within the eject motor um, you can just install this now okay I would recommend rebuilding this I'm going to continue the video on rebuilding this uh, once I'm done reassembling the drive okay just for argument's sake I'm not going to screw it in this goes back here like this right in that spot okay, and get screwed back in here and there you reinsert this here okay it's usually easy to reinsert this first once that's in place go ahead take the upper part I'm actually going to remove this for now just for ease of installation get this again underneath that tab and make sure that it gets under this tab here that's the important part insert there and you'll have to finagle this back and forth because as you can see here this is not going down because the tab from the lower sliding plate is forward so if I push that back here that should eventually get it to be able to slide in so what I'll do is I'll take that out we'll adjust that back a bit like that that should allow it to clear and should allow it to just drop right in so you just have to play with this back and forth until it actually goes in where it should
forgive me as I adjust this thing they don't always go in exactly 100% perfect the correct way the first time being more finicky than I would have imagined Usually, here we go, we can try to get it in like this over here. There we go. Okay. Apologize for botching that so badly. It's as long as it's ever taken me to get that back in. All right. Basically, just doing everything in reverse. Taking these springs again with your really tiny pliers. I'll bring this in closer. Grabbing by that point closest to the spring down and then hooking it back over. Of course, it didn't want to go perfectly. There we go. Okay. And over. Very nice. I'll do the same thing on this side. doesn't quite catch there we go move it over and in perfect now that's caught now last but not least assuming that the eject motor is in there okay we have our little plastic plate from earlier which I neglected to clean up so we'll just do that really quickly wasn't quite concerned about the inert piece of plastic so all right, there's that. So now be sure to slide this on the correct way. And you'll hear a little click when this gets back into place. That, just like that. Well, my, my apologies about that. That's what happens when you neglect to realize that your memory card is basically full. So, back where we were before, you can see here the metal tab, or plastic tab rather, lifts up the head assembly, okay, just as it should be. As if you recall from the beginning of this clip that the action for this was incredibly slow when it would go down. The drive would actually go down, but it would be very, very slow. So now if we hit the tab this time, you'll see a much improved action. You see that the entire thing just slams, snaps shut, pushing this, very easy to put back up, snaps closed. Okay. And it's easy enough to test this as well. We use a disc that we have, we can insert here, and there we go. Locks in place very nicely, okay? You can eject it just as easily. So assuming you have the gears back in place as well, uh, that's basically all there is to it as far as actually working on the drive itself. So now what I'll get to momentarily is how to open up and inspect and re-lubricate the gears on the inside of the small eject motor. That in and of itself is not that hard, however getting to inside this larger final gear is a little bit challenging. So what we'll do is we'll open this up. There are multiple different revisions of this gearing and housing. I've seen some secured with tabs, like this one is here. I've also even seen some on a very early revision drive from a Macintosh 512KE that had screws that would actually hold that in place. And as I said previously, and you saw, sometimes there's little metal tabs which hold this circuit board in place, or there's some like this where there are wires that go from the motor into the board and the wires make it easier to get this off because you don't have to bend the tabs. If you bend the tabs, you have to be very, very careful. Okay, so first thing we'll do, first thing to note actually is to look at the position of the gear. Okay, you'll see that this knob here, which actually ejects the drive, is somewhat offset from center, maybe about 11 o'clock or so. It's not absolutely crucial that you put it back in that position, but it is helpful. 
Okay, first thing we'll do is we'll get this little blob of grease off here. I've noticed on these that it's completely variable. Some of these have little to no grease, some have a big blob like you just saw there. This should rotate, which this one does. We'll oil it a tad anyway at the end. Just get some of the grease off here. There we go, get all that off. So what you're looking for here, at least on this drive, is these little plastic tabs. There's one here, one here, and one here. And what you don't want to do is pull back these plastic tabs. They're not meant to be pulled back. They simply hold the metal cover in place. Okay, I've broken those off previously. It is something that you can overcome if it does occur, but it's probably best to not do that if you don't need to. This tab here, it depends on the plastic. Okay, these have gotten older. Some of them are more brittle than others. And sometimes the tab can actually snap off just from you pulling it back. What I suggest is to pull it back just a tad like this while working the metal cover. Sometimes you can do it with one hand, kind of simultaneously lifting the metal cover and pulling back the tab like I just did there. Okay, that way if you do that, the plate will come up at the earliest possible point which means that you'll be pulling back the plastic tab for as little time and as um, short of a pullback as possible. Okay, so we'll open that up. And inside here, you'll see that there are numerous gears. As has been widely reported by many people, a lot of times this gear down here, as you can see, is a little bit different color. It may be cracked or broken in half and not working, which is one thing that causes many drives to fail to eject at all. What I would do is I would take a picture, okay, or draw an illustration, whatever it is you want to do, of what the gears look like, what position they're in, how they go, because we're going to be removing all of these in order to get out the old grease and lubricate them with new grease. The first one to come out is this one here, okay. And if you look inside, I don't know how well you can see this, there's basically some gunked up residue around the spindle that it came off of, which is what used to be its lubricating grease. Okay, And the EM30L, which we have here, is a very good, suitable uh, replacement for that grease as well. Okay, So we take that one out. We'll also take the tiny gear here. I usually just pull it by its upper teeth. This one actually appears to be in very good shape. So I will use this again. If not, you can order replacements from eBay and other various sources. So you can see there, there's also some grease residue left underneath that gear. Okay, and now you might wonder, okay, now that that one's out, well, you can see this rotates pretty freely, which is good. But how do we get this out? This gear's stuck here and this one's stuck under here. And the way you do that is now by removing this upper circuit board you actually have to get in here in order to do so you see there are two clips one here one there i'm going to pull back this clip just a tad and this is a little bit more difficult to get off because you're dealing with some parts inside that actually come in contact with the top of the gear okay it's basically a little switch that lets the gear know that it's reached its end of cycle and to switch off. It's a cutoff switch. So one and then two. And again, these tabs also are prone to breaking. So just be careful. It's a little difficult to show on camera. Now you kind of lift this up. You don't want to take this and pry it this way or that way. You don't want to pry it. You want to make sure that you get both of the clips off and pull this up. And you'll see what I'm talking about inside. Inside there, there's the top of the gear. Okay, that's the white retaining part there. And inside we have this switch. And the lobe of this here, when it rotates, as you can see, it rotates like this, it turns around. That lobe hitting this switch well, actually, if you were to put it in there, 
open the switch up which cuts off the basically sends the signal to the drive uh, circuitry to cut off the motor and stop it from ejecting okay so later on as you can see there are little slats here and here when we reassemble this this actual assembly here has to fit perfectly back in there in order for this to function again and for this to close so to take this apart use either your fingers or some pliers to squeeze these two parts together and when you do so usually this is under a little bit of tension and it's likely to pop one way or the other so just be careful with that so it doesn't go flying it's not going to hurt you but it could go flying across the room so we'll go ahead and we'll push in here there it goes it just pushed out nicely okay and there's the rest of that gear okay we'll put that aside as well and there's the top to it and the other thing to note okay is that if you saw when we took that off and where this gear was positioned before the lobe okay the lobe of the gear actually faces opposite this piece okay that's a very critical thing to note because if you put it together where the lobe is facing the same direction as this this will stop in the wrong position okay so we have to reassemble it correctly after we'll take that out we'll take this out as well there we go and then we can remove this final gear here as well okay so now we have all the gears out what we're going to do now is our usual technique of using the isopropyl alcohol to clean off all this grease in here. Stop the camera momentarily and do that, and then we'll get back to re-lubricating. Okay. The other thing to do is to make sure that on these spindles, as you can see, there's also grease on here, underneath these where the surface was touching. Okay, be sure to clean all that off as well, as well as any residue that may be inside this plate here, as you can see there okay so everything's all nice and clean all the gears everything else have all been cleaned individually first thing I like to do is see this is the actual motor gear itself sometimes they're just a little bit bound up a little bit finicky they were lubricated at one point so what I will do is take that fine instrument oil bit on top next to it extra with the cotton swab that's all right a little, little little extra bit gets on the housing this is not a big deal and then right now it now it moves very freely without any friction okay, one thing that I would caution you about is making sure that you do not get tempted to open up the motor itself because you can you can remove these plastic tabs pull the motor out of the housing okay and you can get that far if you really had to although there's really no reason I can think of to do that and then if you do that you can actually open the motor itself by pulling back these metal tabs the problem with that is that once you do that it is very difficult to reassemble correctly and you'll likely wind up breaking it in the process okay so the next thing we do we'll swab this out make sure there's nothing left in there that's totally clean last bit of oil off there that's good and now what we want to do is take a clean swab and go ahead here and start re-lubricating these surfaces just a tad bit on the swab and you really need I mean, literally the tiniest little film on there you can see here it's barely perceptible making sure there's just enough on the surface and also on the actual spindles 
And the reason for that is that if you have too much, there is such a thing as too much of a good thing, sometimes it will actually cause the gears to bind instead of having a nice smooth action. So there you can see very nice thin coat. And then since I have some on here as well, I usually just swab in here just to give a very, very fine thin coat for the main gear. All right. So we got that there. Also take this plate, but just whatever you have left, and like the finest, finest little film on there, just to help with the rotation. Okay. Next, what we'll do is we will put back this main gear. This is the first one that goes in. And as you can see already, this spins very easily, not sticking at all, just gliding on the surface of that tiny little bit of lubrication we put on. And then the next part to put on is the actual drive gear. Remember again, aligning it roughly with 11 o'clock or so up there. And then remembering that this little tab goes in the opposite direction. So it's a little tricky to put on. Like I said, this is a little bit more tricky when you have metal tabs connecting here and pushing this back, but it is doable. I've done it before. So go ahead. Get this clipped on. I just kind of push it in until it snaps. There we go. And now the lobe is snapped in. Okay, opposite from can see here opposite from this drive pin. Okay, so we'll get it set in position. Next is to reapproximate this. You have to use these here, these two points, okay, those two points there and there, and fit them into the slots here. And it may take a little working and adjustment. You may not get it perfectly the first time, but part of the trick is to level in the board right at a uniform height so that both of the clips snap at the same time. Sometimes that's easier said than done. So you can see here one of the clips went down. The other one's being a little bit finicky so I'm going to release this clip. Try to make sure again that the metal tabs are aligned in their slots. This is easier for me to see than it would be ever to show you. So you just have to see it yourself. Okay. There we go. So we got that one side down. Hmm. And it still does not want to 100% go in now. Coincidentally, this is actually good because I, want to, I don't want to make this seem like it's the world's easiest thing to do. And then people get frustrated and say, hey, how come it was so easy for him to do? One thing you can do to try to help, actually, which I neglected to do, is to turn the lobe away. That'll make it easier for the switch to fit in. I'll try to get this lined up here. Here we go. There we go. Yeah, so that was part of the problem was the lobe was in the way. Okay, the lobe was in the way. All right, so there's that. That's snapped back in. Okay. And then we just go about getting the other gears in. Remember this one here? And this one did wind up being in good shape. Believe me, if they're in good shape, reuse them. Okay, because although the replacements are there, they're certainly not the cheapest things there ever were. And well, honestly, why waste a good gear? What's the point in that? Make sure these ride together nicely. Oop, I got a little hair, a little fuzz on there. There we go. Okay, now when 
these are all put back in the proper place, this should not move easily. Okay, they don't move simply and they don't move easily. So there's that there. We'll go and get the plate here. And this cover again slides underneath these two tabs. If you see them, one there, one there again. Slides under the tabs. And then gets pushed directly in to snap in with this tab. You should hear a nice snapping sound when it goes in if it feels like going in. Or if it's going to be stubborn, try to pull the tab back a, a bit because again, you don't want to snap it unnecessarily with pressure. I apologize my moving here with the camera. There we go. Okay, so now it's snapped into place. And now this should be good to go and ready to reinstall. So we'll grab our refurbished drive up there for you and quite literally all you're going to do is slide it in I guess the last thing is depending on how much lubrication is already on there you just stick a small little bit of the lubricant right there okay I already had some on the plate here but a nice little blob actually will help the action of that as I said before, we'll, we'll put this in first. Here we go. Take this little guy, push it back in. It's very easy to do, and it is keyed so you can't put it in backwards. Get that set back in place there. Actually, have a little bit of dust on there. I didn't wind up cleaning that. There we go, that's better. Suck. Grab our screws that we took out earlier, put the two of those back. There we go. And there you have it. There's the entire drive re lubricated, cleaned and ready for service again okay again you can just double check and test actions very smooth very quick eject action as well so momentarily what I'll do is I'll hook this up to my test stand we'll give it a go make sure it functions properly and we'll be all done alrighty so I got my test cable hooked up to the external port of my Macintosh SE we'll fire this thing up and get ready to go know that this is not normally the approved method of doing this but this will make it easy for illustration Start it up, work well. We got to the desktop. Now we'll shut her down, eject. And the eject function works nicely as well. Alright, so in a nutshell, that is the refurbishment of the Sony 800K 1.4 megabyte drive for Macintosh computers. If you have any questions, comments, anything else that you would like to add, please feel free to drop a comment on my page. I'll get back to you as soon as I possibly can. All right, and look forward to some other guides in the future. Thank you very much.